So, got a bit of a mission today. Got a uh, number of jobs I want to get done on this little little bugger. Going to change that rear engine mount and change the turbo and change the wastegate. Show you what I've got going on in here. First of all, I don't know if this is first of all. I might actually do this now. Got this poly mount, which is from a Peugeot. I think it's on the bottom of the engine or something at the back. Gearbox mount or steady or something. But yeah, I'm going to see if this fits in the rear mount on the Micra. Because I made Delrin mounts and it's way too savage. I've actually got a couple of videos that I'm editing where I've spoken about the mounts a couple of times, machining the mounts and whatnot. I'm also I'm going to put the old wastegate back on. I had a bit of a whoopsie with the old one. <clears throat> so that's in pieces while I uh, tinker with it and come up with a plan. And then this in here, I've already opened it first thing this morning just to uh, make sure it was what I thought it was. And it is. O-ring. We got couple of uh, seals down in there and then we've got a TDO4 let's, uh, let's make a bit of space so what I'm gonna do oh yeah when I put the old I got to change the flanges obviously for the old wastegate so I've got some uh, nice stainless flanges to use that I got from XO racing but yeah this is for max peeling rods as you might have guessed, hang on, hang on. This isn't going well. As you may have guessed. So this is a TDO4 from Max Peeding Rods. And I mean you can see where it's been balanced, the grinding marks where it's been balanced. And I've seen a couple of videos, people testing these Max Peeling Rods turbos for balance, and they always seem to pass, so I'm not concerned about the balance at all. It's not something I can actually check myself. But you can see all these like grinding marks of places where it's been uh, balanced. Now, I'm not going to bother taking it apart, obviously, because it's all balanced up and everything. And uh, I don't think there's going to be anything in interesting to see inside it will just have a 270 degree thrust washer and just some plain uh, floating bearings but I am interested to get the old one off the car and get the two next to each other and see how they compare so that's what I'm going to do next is get all the old bits off the car and then we can come back to the bench and have a little bit of a comparison Right, so this is where I'm at. This is the old uh, Delrin bushes that I made. Mega hard, obviously. Now this is my new potential mega cheapo hack, polybush hack, which you can see here. It is a, I'm gonna show you in a minute. It is a Peugeot gearbox or engine steady doggy bone polybush that goes in the center bearing support for the drive shaft and then that joins to the subframe so the bushes themselves push straight in they're like the right diameter I had to machine basically I used a hacksaw and uh, cut six mil off of one of them because they were butting up before they were you know, sitting tight on the uh, on the tube here, and then I also had to cut down the spacer in the middle. As you can see, the poly is like about three mil too wide still, but I think that will squash in. I think that will squash in fine. And then the hole in the middle's right, and um, I will report back later. But hopefully, this is going to be stiff enough 
could make it even more stiffer by um, filling these voids with either polyurethane sealant or maybe some metal. Because once they're in there, they're not coming out, I don't think. Anyway, I'm going to fit this up and um, I'll report back when I drive the car. And then also, I've got the turbo off. There's the housing. There's the, um, the rotating assemblies. So uh, I'm going to get this back on the car and then we'll get back to this. Here you can see where the wastegate has been blowing. It was actually blowing down the bottom here as well. Um, there was actually soot. You can see there's like soot up around here. And if I go to the boost pipe, there's soot. Just, um, you can see the odd speck here and there of soot. Like there's a lot of soot in the engine bay from, uh, it's basically just blowing which is going to be because the ceiling ring was loose it's not it's neither tight between the two flanges obviously it should be sandwiched between the two flanges and it's not and also it should be a bit taller so that it um, uh, it preloads the valve so there's actually some preload on the valve uh, which is not doing either. You can actually see daylight between the ceiling ring and the valve. So there are a few little design flaws really with these wastegates. So I think because this is my daily driver, for reliability, I'm just going to go back to the Turbo Smart Gate. I think it's my best option. Right, I know I'm being shit with the camera action today, but um, I've got so many things that I want to smash out. I've still got this turbo to fit. I've got a boost pipe to make. Wastegate. The manifold's been modified for the wastegate again and all that. Put a bend on this, basically. Make some pie cuts, put a bend, make a boost pipe. And then... I've also changed springs around in my wastegate to try and, because I, I can't remember, I think it was like 11 PSI before, so I want it to drop back to, what was it 9.8? It was either 10.8 or 9.8, I can't remember, but yeah, I'll put a slightly lighter spring in so that I can run a little less boost and then bring it back with the boost controller, so probably turn the camera off for a minute while I do some clean up and and deburr all my pie cuts and it, and all that and then uh yeah see you in a mo finally I think I am almost ready for the the new turbo core I've got my manifold modified put the two bolt 38 mil back on for the turbo smart and I changed the spring, put a slightly lighter spring in. I'm hoping it's going to be about 6 PSI. So that, 6 or 7 PSI, so that if I wanted to, I could like pretty much double that on, on electronic boost control. That's the manifold. I've got, I've got the um, turbo housing modified so that I can like have a much better run for the boost pipe and I started making the boost pipe which is here and then look, I've had to build a tent because it's bloody shit out here and then dropped it so yeah that's going to come out of out of there and it's going to it's going to go down down the front Um, yeah, and the turbo just about misses the radiator, I think. So it's a straight up OE replacement, and um, let's have a little comparison. So on 
on the original it's got Welsh plugs to block off the redundant coolant ports and then on uh, the new one it's actually got allen key bolts with big thick copper washers they might even be doughty washers and then uh, looks to me like all the ports look the same on the side the castings look very very similar to be fair this looks like a cast finish on the outside here and this is all like a machined center it's like a lot more machining going on if i'm honest and then look around here we got different nuts on the front very very similar looking blades very similar design i can't imagine there's a great deal of difference with them let's get some a uh, couple of measurements so we got 40.5 40 40.7 and then the extrusor size 56 56 it's hardly worth measuring this because it's absolutely toast as you can see but we can get an idea let's try and find a couple of fins that aren't ruined 41 again 45 <clears throat> Forty one point three and <laughs> forty seven two millimeters difference. Wow. So that's like a mill has been smashed off of the edge of each fin blade or whatever you want to call it. Also it comes with a nitrile a very nitrile looking O ring, which is um which is promising, very ideal. And then I guess, apart from that, we can see how the turbo gasket, you know, for the drain lines up. And that seems to line up, like, really decent. But I think I'm going to put the drain on once it's on the car. And then I guess also we can check the... See, they've got different threads. It looks like it's a different thread. That's a, f a coarse thread. And uh, the actual thread in the turbo is different. So that's one difference that I found. So I'm going to get my banjo bolts. No bueno. Oh, imagine, imagine if I've got, if I haven't got a bolt to go in the thread. That's going to suck. Well, there we go, look. Completely pissed on my parade, isn't it? It looks like it looks like I'm not going to have a bolt for that. So, I'm not even sure what thread it is. We've got M10 by 1. And it looks like an M10 by 1. But I don't think it is. This might be um, a no-go straight off the uh, get-go. Well, there we go. Looks like uh, 
It looks like we're going to get shut down on this job. See if I can find an M10 by 1.5 tap. I've got an M10 by 1.5, which is matching the banjo. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a tap in it and then and then try and wash it out. I bet it's an imperial thread for some re weird reason. What I'm actually doing is uh, winding it upside down to try and make, you know, hopefully the swarf will stay on the tap. But if I'm honest, it didn't really cut much. We can have a look, see how much swarf is on there. It's kind of, I would have said it's essentially just, uh, I would have said essentially it's just cleaning the thread, like um, like the thread was a bit shitty, because it actually seems um, like it hasn't cut that much. So now I'm going to try and uh, clean all the swarf out, but it means Right now I can use the original Subaru Banjo Bolt, which is good. Probably change the copper washers. Got some fresh ones. We go fresh copper washers. Get, get rid of them. Are they chips or are they? Oh, they might be from balancing. That's from balancing. So this has got no balancing on the back side. It's all done on the front side on the nut. By the looks of it. And the same there, that you can see there's a bit ground out. Oh, we'll cut that. We'll cut that bit. Bit of WD-40. They can sponsor me if they want. I'm not sponsored, but they're welcome to. All right, see how well this fits. I'm going to put a bit of square on it. Right, let's see how this goes together. It's absolutely softened in WD. And it just, uh, just went in nicely. Right, it was a little bit of a fight, but got the circlip in there in the end. My dad had some circlip pliers that I didn't know about. So we uh, we double teamed it and got that together. And then I've put the turbo into the exhaust housing and that all seems to fit nicely. Whether it's clocked correctly, I'm not sure, but it's pretty close. Booth pipe's done. I think I've literally just got to put the uh, drain pipe back on and then I could go home. So, turn that off. I'm going to put the drain on, let that cool, blah, blah, blah. I think everything's done. Oh, I've got that pipe to put on as well. So I've got that top boost pipe to put on, that boost pipe to put on. And then I think I can drive home. Oh, vacuum lines. I might just go wastegate pressure and sort vac lines out tomorrow. So yeah, hopefully get a video when I'm driving it. 20 past eight and I'm all, all done, I think. Seems good. The tune isn't 
is not right at all. So I'm going to go and uh, wash my hands and then we're going to get out of here.